So welcome to the Tara Clinic and welcome also to the lineage of your healing tribe. What I want to suggest in this clinic is that you are drawn to it, you have registered for it, you have shown up for it because it is your lineage. And what does that lineage consist of? I will speak of that specifically in regard to the Tara approach, and I will speak about it from a feminist perspective, from the perspective of feminine empowerment, and connect that specifically to the Tara approach. But I also want to speak of that lineage somewhat more generally, because there are many people. It is a global lineage, and many are in it. And it is a lineage of people around the world, everywhere, who are attuned to bioelectricity, to vibratory healing, to the invisible nature, invisible presence of bioelectricity, of energetic conductivity that allows us to see both the obvious, and I'm speaking here in terms of health needs in, in a holistic way, and what is not so obvious. And this is the blessing and the incredible gift of virtually all traditional healing systems. This is not unique to any one system. It is a quality within multiple systems that are linked together. And it is obvious within the Tara approach and specifically the energy healing of the Tara approach that what I learned from my teacher, Mary Eno Burmeister, is intended for everyone, is not identified with one culture in particular, and Mary made that quite clear. So this is an aspect of traditional wisdom, of universal wisdom, that is our birthright. And in this time of alchemical change, in which we are giving birth to a new world, in which we are giving birth to potential that lives within each one of us. Of course, women are going to be leaders because it is a giving birth process and women know how to do that innately, biologically. We are the bringers of life. And so it is quite clear that women's leadership, particularly in terms of health, is absolutely appropriate and necessary for this time. So you are part of that lineage. You are part of a lineage that sees beyond the gross level of manifestation, that attunes beyond the gross level of manifestation, but also does not ignore it. So we are part of a lineage of holistic, practical visionaries who propagate wisdom. So this is one of the essential qualities of feminine leadership, generosity. Generosity is a characteristic of the feminine. Of course, there are many different expressions of the feminine, but I'm speaking of the feminine in my experience and in my understanding through my own experience individually, but also with my mentors and Mary, you know, Burmeister is certainly a key mentor for me. And of the three people who have disseminated Jinshin, the art of compassion, which is the applied touch component of the Tara approach, Mary was the one, the only one really, who propagated the wisdom, who sent it out into the world. Jiro Murai, Haruki Kato, who were also students of this remarkable system, were less concerned with its propagation. They were somewhat confined and narrow in terms of the communities 
that they transmitted to, and they didn't attempt to expand those communities. They had no intention or active uh, participation specifically in their expression of enhancing the populations that would receive this miraculous healing gift. Mary, on the other hand, specifically invested in this propagation. In fact, <coughs> I have uh, as a treasure her first books that she created. Excuse me, just going to mute for a minute. The very first books that Mary uh, wrote to disseminate the Tara approach in the form of Jinshin, that aspect of the Tara approach, she not only wrote them, she typed the books because that's what was used at that time. She mimeographed the books because that's what she had. She collated the pages, put them into folders, and put little, what were then called brads, I don't know if we even have them anymore, uh, to keep the pages together. Those were the first Jinshin books. And I have them. So that was the level of her investment in propagating this system. These were the first books that shared the miraculous healing wisdom of Jinshin with the world. So I want to note that because I consider it a demonstration of feminine empowerment and a characteristic of the feminine that Mary would never have identified herself that way. She never would have identified herself as a feminist. She never would have claimed that as a motivation. But in retrospect, uh, I, can, I can do that. I can say that now with incredible enthusiasm and awareness. So I wanted to tell you uh, something about the specific components of Jinshin that we're going to tap into here and how they link with the Tara approach, how the amplification of what I learned from Mary has fed the neuroscience of the Tara approach. So what we have in uh, the Jinshin uh, medicine bag that you've already been exposed to, but I wanna just amplify a little bit of what these specific treasures are. And one of course is the map of the body. So the map of the body that Mary translated from the Japanese that she received from Jiro Murai, that map of the body is unique to this system. So there's overlap with acupuncture, but it is distinctly differentiated from acupuncture. And my curiosity was aroused by that as I continued my investigations, and I'll, I'll share more about that. But this distinct map, simple as it is, is a treasure of its own. If you never learned anything more than the map, you would have an incredible wisdom bank. If you could familiarize yourself with the sites, if you could um, find your personal relationship to this map, you would already have an incredible healing gift. But there's so much more. Uh, and of course, even in this clinic, we will still only get a taste of this more. And of course, I love it when people want to go further and and the foundations class that's coming up is a place where you can dive in more fully. Uh, but even if you just take away the gifts of this clinic, you still will have a, a, a changed life, an enhanced life. So in addition to the map of the body, there are is this understanding, and, and this is uh, often 
um, almost too simple for people to recognize the significance of the fingers and the toes. So the understanding of the fingers and the toes as being conduits of major energetic pathways. That also, even if that was the only thing that one learned, you would have a lifetime ally in your healing journey. So the fingers and the toes, there are many ways to hold the fingers and the toes, but even if you hold them in the most simple and obvious ways, you will be tonifying, aligning, amplifying, expanding the activity of all of the elements in your mind body. You will be stepping into what Mary called an, uh, a state without attitude. So it's what that meant in Mary's language is consciousness. You would be clearing your mind. You would be putting your mind in a, to a state of equanimity and compassionate presence. And what always delights me, of course, about the fingers and the toes is how incredibly potent they are in serving children. So the third incredible but very simple treasure that is a component of Jinchen are the Inju. And the Inju are different mudras or finger postures that are unique to this system. All of these qualities are unique to this system. You won't find them in other systems. You will find something like it, but not exactly the same. And there's a reason for that that I'll mention in a moment. The other component that is not so unique to Jinshin, but is more physiologically based in Jinshin, is unlimited consciousness, expansive consciousness, unlimited potential that is known to us beginning with conception in the womb. And Mary articulated that, and I'll speak to that in a moment. She articulated it without ever saying the words prenatal or pre and perinatal psychology or prenatal consciousness. She never said those words. She didn't know those words. Those words were not in her vocabulary, but she said it in many ways. Um, I'll give you examples of that. She said, embryology is the story of creation. She said, the development of the embryo is the story of humanity. She said, when you know the experience of a being's creation, you get to the source of their disharmony. She said, the baby in utero absorbs all the surrounding vibrations of the environment. And she said, the study of your life in the womb will tell you everything about yourself. And she quoted Jiro Murai as saying the umbilicus and the placenta are the warehouses of destiny. So without knowing anything about pre and perinatal psychology without knowing that much about embryology itself, uh, without knowing that much about neurodevelopment. This information was inherent in the transmission of Jinshin. And I would posit that you're here because you know this too. So this is part of this lineage. So the lineage is a lineage of universal wisdom that those of us who are attuned to this vibratory transmission have easy access to, everyone has access to it. 
But those of us, and I would posit again that women are more likely to have this access. We therefore can be vehicles of it at a time when it is needed more than ever before. It's always been needed, but the opening to it is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger due to the nature of the crises that represent the disintegration of the old world, which is necessary for a new world to come into being. So in my uh, learning with Mary and being curious and paying attention and taking these notes that saw these sentences emerging without very much further explication, I might say, and without anybody asking any questions, including me, about this. This was a long time ago uh, in my development. Um, I was uh, in my 30s. I was a single mother with a little girl at home who was um, also earning a living and attending these classes. Uh, not quite sure why, and soaking it up, soaking it up, soaking it up. This was before I had my doctorate, uh, and I had a, an educational background, but not in anything related to what I was hearing from Mary. It was a, uh, an educational background in the humanities and literature primarily, and in writing. So I was just absorbing. I didn't even feel qualified to ask a question, quite honestly. Um, and the people who were asking questions were people who had been studying with her for years and years. And I was, you know, I was the novice. I was hidden in the back of the room, but I was curious. And as things progressed and I investigated some of these remarkable statements, I discovered the world of what is commonly called the extraordinary meridians and which I call the rivers of splendor and pre and perinatal psychology. And I discovered this as a neuroscientist. I discovered it after a great uh, deal had happened that had led me to uh, return to graduate school to get another degree. I already had a master's in other field, but I changed course and became a neuroscientist. And through my understanding of the brain, because I was primarily interested in traumatic head injury and recovery from traumatic head injury, that's what my doctoral research was about, uh, I discovered neurodevelopment, the embryology of the brain. And this caused me in my, uh, in this, using these very qualities that we were talking about earlier, of paying attention to what's current, of being spontaneous, of uh, being willing to be unique and do something erratic, like totally change course, something I also have in common with spring chain. Uh, I discovered that these statements and this system that I had been so fortunate to receive, even not understanding why I was receiving it, all actually made sense in terms of the healing process. So I discovered that these statements from Mary were accurate in regard to neurodevelopment, in regard to embryology. So I then investigated further, discovered the actual pathways of what are called the extraordinary meridians. And I want to speak very briefly to that term, extraordinary meridians. So the rivers of splendor, upon which the Jinshin energy medicine is based. So the energy medicine being this map of the body, the Inju, the understanding of the channels of energy in the body. The understanding of those channels is that they actually are not linear pathways, which is what meridians are. They also are not extra in any way. They are fundamental. They precede the formation, and Mary also said this very clearly. There's a quote from her in which she specifically refers to the development postnatally 
of the ordinary meridians. So those ordinary meridians, the 12 ordinary meridians, evolve out of the extraordinary meridians, which I call the rivers of splendor, for the reasons that I just said. Neither the word meridian nor the word extraordinary, um, extra ordinary, apply. They were also called extraordinary because they were used under extraordinary circumstances, not commonly as we use them in the Tara approach, and also because they were considered odd, and they were for odd circumstances, which is not how we use them in the Tara approach. And that is in part because we're not using needles. So if we use needles, the impact of the treatment on these sites is very different. And I've discussed this with Yvonne Farrell, who uh, is probably the primary author in uh, acupuncture tradition on these channels. Uh, the needling of these sites, which compose the rivers of splendor, they're all composed of the sites on the map of the body. The needling of the sites will have a much more a profound impact, uh, meaning uh, almost overwhelming impact, than touch. Touch allows the titration of the experience to be organic and individuated. So perhaps some of you have had an experience with acupuncture in which it could just kind of wipe you out. Uh, so powerful can the treatments be, and that's wonderful. But it's not wonderful if you're treating trauma. It's not wonderful if you're treating shock. What you want in the treatment of trauma and shock is the opposite. You want to antidote the magnitude of the experience by titrating it according to the window of tolerance of that person's physiology and their mind-body interface and their entire nervous system. So that's what the touch is capable of doing. And so you can use these sites much more commonly when you are using the medium of touch than if you were needling them. And as I said, I've had this conversation and Yvonne Farrell is in complete agreement. So what the TAR approach has done is that it has created a methodology for accessing that early memory efficiently in a variety of ways. So actually multiple methodologies. And it also has created an understanding of neurodevelopment and its impact on symptomology in adult life, in postnatal life, and not only a way of treating that through touch, but also a way of using language to mend the broken, fragmented tears in original brilliance. The ways in which our original brilliance, which is holistic, it's, it's also, original brilliance is also physical resilience. So that is our birthright, is resilience, counter to what is disseminated uh, so casually as a natural deterioration, it's just actually incorrect. There, of course, there's some deterioration, uh, because of use, but enhanced resilience is actually our birthright. Enhanced wisdom, absolutely, and enhanced physiological resilience. And we will have deterioration in those areas where we have already experienced vulnerability. So each experience of what might be called deterioration, or let's say a knee issue, or a neck issue or uh, a, a simulative issue, I will posit from my experience has its precursor earlier in life. And so if you can go to that precursor, uh, then you can in fact accelerate the evolution of resilience within that person so that an injury or a, a symptom is a gateway to 
development, enhanced development. That's the nature of how the TAR approach works. So I wanted to share that with you and also invite you now uh, into a somatic exercise so that you can experience this magic. And that exercise will culminate this introductory piece. Uh, and then we'll end the recording and, and go to your questions. So I am going to invite you to tap into an area of the body which Mary spoke of and Drew Mirai illustrated with chrysanthemums. So the chrysanthemum level of the body, which is also the regenerative level of the body. And that area is from the pubic bone to the umbilicus in the front. And then from the coccyx to the top of the sacrum in the back. And you can span these areas with the scope of your palm in front and in back. So I am placing the palm of my hand on my lower belly and my middle finger is on my pubis. If that's not comfortable, you can also do this in which my little finger is on my pubis and my thumb is just below my umbilicus whichever is the most comfortable for you. And then my middle finger is on my coccyx and the heel of my hand is resting on the top of my sacrum. So let's hold these two sites, the front and back of each other. Allow your feet to be beautifully planted on the earth. Let your feet be approximately uh, hip width or a little less apart. Soften your knees and all your joints. Soften your face and drop your shoulders. Allow your chest to widen. And bring your head back slightly. So the crown of your head floats in alignment with your spine heavenward and simply breathe and allow that breath to drop into this chrysanthemum space, your regenerative field. Three beautiful breaths with the exhalation twice as long as the inhalation. and allow your consciousness to inhabit this field. So let's reflect for a moment on what is in this field. This is your regenerative field in which centuries of inheritance is stored. Deeply feminine space, whether you've had children or not, this is the birth of the new world, is here in you. This is your partnership with our living earth. Breathe into that. And for all of us, myself included, that lineage definitely includes suffering, definitely 
includes hardship. But there is also a vast storehouse of resilience. And I'm inviting you to tap into this on the feminine level. And if you're watching this and you're male, there's no difference. I'm inviting you to tap into centuries of feminine wisdom in this particular lineage of vibratory awareness, seeing into the invisible frame of wisdom in each human being, in ourselves, in communities, in families, in the world, but individually, we have the capacity to attune at this level, and you're part of that lineage, and your hands, and your body, and your voice, and your mind are the conduits of that wisdom. So nourish this field, feel how it's becoming warmer. Enjoy expansiveness here. Women have been so educated to narrow in this area. We want to expand energetically, limitlessly, be big. When you feel full with this warmth and nourishment, I'm going to invite you to bring your hands with the palms resting on this inguinal area that starts at either side of the pubis and goes up to this bone, normally referred to as the hip bone, and rest the heel of your hand on that bone and your fingertips, depending on your hands, are likely with the middle finger tip on either side of the pubis. This is a site known as wash your heart with laughter. And what we do in this touch is integrate that regenerative nourishment with joy. So let's breathe into that integration with joy, the washing of the heart with laughter, alchemizing our regenerative history with the triumph of resilience. Three breaths. And then bringing our hands into an inju, which is familiar to you. It's a prayer posture. It is also used in yoga as a mudra. And on a very practical level, what it does when you make a palpable contact between the pads of the fingers and the palms of the hands is you align yourself with the channel called the main central vertical flow, the channel that brings us into our original brilliance and allows us to move forward from that intelligy into action. So these are the gifts of the Tara approach, the gifts of Jinshin, the gifts that were transmitted to me from a woman, Mary Eno Burmeister, who fulfilled the feminine destiny of propagating resources generously. I watched her do that over and over and over again, impractically and generously, without 
any concern for the financial returns. If you asked Mary to help you, she helped you. I have direct experience of that and I watched her do it sometimes to the objection of the business managers in her field. That is the feminine transmission she made to me in those moments. The generosity, the love, the seamless connection with a vibratory universal lineage of healing wisdom and an undeniable dedication to the children of the future. That is the Tara approach. That is Jinjin Tara. And that is my transmission from my beloved teacher, Mary Inobermeister. Thank you.